Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional time. This is for Thursday, January the 11th, 2024, almost said 2023. And we'll be starting in Luke chapter 11. If you want to open your Bibles there, or if you're a tech savvy 21st century kind of person, uh, open up your Bible app to Luke chapter 11. Yeah, before you do any of that, hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever content's added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. You know all that. Kind of gets repetitive after a while, and it's redundant too. Anyway, Luke chapter 11 is where we are going to start today. And these are shorter readings than what I was doing before, and they're easier to, to uh, keep up with. And then also make uh, uh, commentary and various points along the way. So I'm, I'm, I love doing the daily devotionals and I really like doing this system we've got here. So anyway, enough of that. And it is generated by Logos. I get no compensation or anything, any kind of consideration from them or BibleSoft. That just happens to be the Bible apps that I use. So without further ado, Luke chapter 11 verses 14 to uh, 53 and he was casting out a demon and it was mute so it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled but some of them said he casts out demons by Beelzebub the ruler of the demons others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven notice they're always testing him I'm not sure who this guy is. Is he really who he says he is? Is he some kind of a fraud? Or what's going on here? So verse 17, But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also was divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who is, does not gather with me scatters. So basically, the lines here have been drawn. You're either in God's kingdom or you're in Satan's kingdom. Both are active. God's kingdom will eventually overpower Satan's kingdom. God gives people, uh, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is, if we don't change our lives, if we are not on his side, uh, we're going to suffer the consequences. It's that simple. Uh, hell and eternal punishment are real places. Not like they don't like to talk about it uh, because it is unpleasant. But that is that is the facts. And so either you have to choose to side with God or or you don't. Those who choose not to side with God uh, are on Satan's side, and there really is no neutrality. You uh, have to pick a side at one point or another. You'll either do it now on this side of eternity, or it'll be too late. And then you will be assigned to a side uh, in eternity. Uh, that's, that's just the way it is. That's the truth of the gospel. That's the truth of the scriptures. So verse 24, he's going to say what happens to this unclean spirit. Uh, he says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through the dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he goes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Something is going to dwell in your heart and in your mind. It cannot be blank. In fact, just try this. Sit for a minute and just go blank. And, and think of nothing. Don't have any feelings or thoughts or anything. How long did it last? Not very long. You've got to have something there. And notice when this unclean spirit comes back, it's worse than the first. He brought friends with him. And notice something else. Jesus says, verse 24, that he goes through the dry places. 
And when he cast out the spirits of the legion into the herd of swine, they went over a cliff and into uh, the water. Interesting. Uh, is it possible these evil spirits don't know how to swim or water somehow hurts them? Good question. Uh, don't know the end. I don't have an answer for that, but that is something uh, to uh, th ponder and think about. So then in verse 27, Jesus says, uh, or, or Luke records rather, that it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. And he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and who keep it. Hear the word of God and keep it. That means you put it into action. You use it. Not just the love your neighbor passages and the ones you like, but even the ones that are difficult to. The ones talking about sound doctrine, the ones talking about righteous living, as defined again in scripture, that is going to be the tough part sometimes. You know, doing the right thing is not always going to be easy. I think that's why it's called the right thing. If it was always easy, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be the right thing to do. So in verse 29, the crowds now are seeking a sign. And while the crowds were thickly uh, uh, gathered together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. The prophet, it just occurred to me as I was reading that, I hear people who don't, years ago in college, we were, it was a speech class, and somehow the whole idea of church came up, I don't even remember how it came up, but one of the young ladies in the class said, you know, I don't like to go to church and be told what a horrible person I am. And then when I was preaching in a certain place, I had a lady, I always knew if the sermon stepped on her toes because I got a phone call Mon Monday or Tuesdays, maybe as late as Wednesday, pointing out that what I said on the last sermon was, well, that, that, that you know, I come to church to feel good, she said, and I didn't feel good. That bothered me when you said that, but look at what Jesus just said. This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign. Well, wait a minute, Jesus. I don't feel good anymore. You hurt my feelings. You're telling me I'm a horrible person. Well, sometimes we need to be told truth that we don't want to hear. And I'm not talking this my truth or your truth. There's no such thing. There's just truth, period. That's it. We're done. And sometimes the preacher is going to have to preach some hard stuff. And rather than call him up and complain... Or go to your elders or your trustees or your deacons or whoever's the decision maker. He needs to go. He was mean. He said that. And that. No, stop. Remember what James said that, you know, whoever hears the word and is not a doer is like someone who looks in a mirror and immediately forgets what he looks like when he walks away. That That's what you have done. As you've forgotten what you look like. You Okay, the Bible is a mirror. So if the preacher says something that steps on your toes, before you call him and chew him out, stop, read, and, li and think. Okay, the preacher preached about gossip. He preached about gluttony. He preached about whatever. And it, it struck a nerve with me. It, it convicted me, is what we used to say in the old days. So is there anything to this, what he said? Oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm thinking about, yeah, I've been gossiping lately. Or I've been... Uh, doing whatever lately, or not doing. So I need to make some change. And then you need to call the preacher, or whoever the speaker was, and say, you know what, thank you for saying that, because it touched me, it convicted me, and I see where I need to change my life and confront my casual Christianity. That's what you need to be doing, not calling to chew them out. Okay, back on track. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, for she came uh, from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. Of course, Jesus is talking about himself there. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment of this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. So verse 33, no one when he has lit a lamp puts it in a secret place, or under a basket, but on a lampstand, so those and those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye, therefore when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. 
Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light as when the, the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. And as he spoke, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and sat down to eat. So he'll eat with the Pharisees. He eats with sinners. He'll eat with uh, pretty much anybody, meet with pretty much anybody. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones! Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But rather give alms with uh, as such things as you have, then indeed all things are clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, ye hypocrites, for you are like graves which are not seen, and the men who walk over them are not aware of them. Then one of the lawyers answered and said to him, Teacher, by saying these things, you reproach us also. Uh, hey, teacher, you're stepping on our toes. You know, this is the, hey, I didn't, I come here to feel good, and you're hurting my feelings. But he said, woe to you also, lawyers. Uh-oh. You lawyers out there? Well, I don't know. For you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple, yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You, have not en uh, you did not enter in yourselves, and those who are entering in you hinder. And those who were entering in, you hindered. And as he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to assail him vehemently and to cross-examine him with, about many things, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something that he might say that they might accuse him. So, yeah, that once again, they're trying to lay a trap for him. You know, in terms of men, uh, they probably are intellectual heavyweights, but Jesus is in a, uh, uh, what is it, super heavyweight class. He's outclassing them at every opportunity or every time they come to try and trap them. And he's always taking them down. And here he's really laying into the lawyers, the Pharisees, the scribe, the ones who are supposed to interpret the law and apply it, but they're making people bear all these burdens. They're, they're being very elitist. You know, the elitist is the one that's going to tell you how to live your life and put all the burden, but they're not going to do the same thing. They're do as I say, not as I do. And that's what was, was going on here. And so Jesus is pushing back. And Jesus is uh, showing their hypocrisy, their legalism, and, and all that sort of thing. So that is going to do it for our reading for today. And so we will now close out uh, in prayer as we usually do. And for Thursdays, we pray for our nation, uh, for our elected officials, uh, uh, bring about peace and righteousness and real justice. Uh, and yes, you need to vote for the president, the governor, even if you voted for the guy in the other party, okay, or the other candidate, all right? That's just what we do as Christians. Okay, so let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for the avenue of prayer. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all the things that uh, you do for us. And for today, we especially want to pray for our nation. Here in America, Lord, I want to pray for our elected officials. Pray the president and the Congress and courts. Lord, help them to make righteous uh, decisions. I want to pray especially for uh, our governor and our president, Lord, that uh, your word can penetrate their hearts and they can see what true righteousness is and that their souls can be one just like everybody else's. We pray, Lord, for our 
uh, uh, members of the legislature and the Congress, the most state legislatures are meeting right now. Let's just pray, Lord, for them to uh, make righteous and wise uh, laws that they will understand that all we have, all our freedoms, everything we have comes from you, not from uh, human uh, origins, not human laws. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the salvation that he brings. And we pray uh, for, for us to be led to a soul if there's someone that we can reach today. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you have any questions, send them to me to timothy4.2.3 gmail.com or leave them in the comment section below. Remember to comment, like, and share these videos. Thank you for being here. Have a great Thursday, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm done. I'm out.